Welcome to today's episode of sketching functions. So we're going to look at four different functions. The first function is the straight line and we are going to have a look at the straight line function y is equal to 2x plus 1. Okay, so there are three things we need to do. We need to know what the gradient does, we need to know the y-intercept, we know the x-intercept. We know those points we can sketch. So how do we find the gradient? Well, the gradient is always the value in front of x. So we can say m equals 2. I like to write it as a fraction because the top talks about the vertical distance and the bottom talks about a horizontal distance. Okay, so I know my gradient is 2 over 1. What is my y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is always going to be the value of c, which is that value plus 1. So in this case, my y-intercept is equal to 1. So I've had a look at my graph. I've found my gradient. I've found my y-intercept. How do I find the my x-intercept? Well, I say let y equal 0. So in my function over here, I will let y equal 0, 2x plus 1, take the 1 over 2x, and we get minus 1 over 2 is equal to x. Fantastic. So now we need to plot those points. Well, what do we know? We know that my y-intercept is at 1, so call that 1. And my x-intercept is at minus a half. So if this is minus 1, that's minus a half. So I know that it needs to go through those two points. And all we do is we connect the dots. Straight line is quite easy to draw. If we find the y-intercept, we find x-intercept, we mark those two points off and we connect the dots. If we have a look at our next function, a parabolic function, which is a parabola, how do we find x-intercept? We let y equal 0, and we solve. So I'm going to get the function 0 is equal to x squared minus 1. 1 is equal to x squared, so therefore plus and minus 1 is equal to x. That's considering we take the square root of both sides. Remember, when we square root, we always put a plus or minus in front. And so we know that the x-intercepts are going to be at x equal to minus 1 and x equal to plus 1. How do we find a y-intercept? Well, once again, we can, we can say we let x equal 0. Or, so if we let x equal 0, this is 0 squared minus 1. So we know that our y-intercept is going to be at y equal to minus 1. And then the turning point. Right, the turning point is an important point that you need to find. And we find it by using the formula x is equal to minus b over 2a. Right. We can substitute and we can solve. And we will get x is equal to So let's just check, x is equal to, we substitute our values in, we get x equal to 0, and therefore we get, when x is 0, we've already figured it out, we get y is equal to minus 1. So if we are to draw this function, and we need to plot our points, we know, first of all, my two x-intercepts are at minus 1 and 1. Right? We know that my y-intercept is at minus 1 and that's also my turning point so we know that the graph must cut there let's make our little marks it must cut there, turn and go through those points right those three important points x-intercept, y-intercept, turning point if you find those three points you can sketch any parabolic function okay is an ex exponential function exponential functions always cross 
the y-axis or cut the y-axis at 0 and 1, right? They cut the y-axis at 1. So what we need to find to draw this graph or to sketch it is we need a point other than the y-intercept because we know it's helpful to find points on both sides of the y-axis, so negative x-values and positive x-values. We need to understand that there's an asymptote involved, which is a line that it never crosses, or my graph never touches. And then we need to understand what does the value of b tell us, because that's going to tell us if it's an increasing function or decreasing function. So to find some points, we can draw... So let us draw a quick table to help us find these points. So x, y, minus 2, 0, and 2. When x is minus 2, y becomes 1 over 9. When x is 0, it's 1. And when x is 2, y is 9. Okay. We know that in an exponential function, b tells us whether a function is increasing or decreasing. So if b is greater than 1, it will be an increasing function. And if b is between 1 and 0, so basically it's a fraction, it will be a decreasing function. So in this case, b is bigger than 1, right? b is equal to 3. So we know it must cut at the point 1. We also have 1, 2, so it's minus 2. 1, 2 is positive 2. So that's 9, that's all the way up there. Let's make, and minus 2 is 1, 9, so it's quite small. And all we do is we just connect those dots. And that is how we draw an exponential function. This point over here is quite an important point to label. And then you label your other two points. And that's your exponential function. Okay. The last function we're going to deal with is then a hyperbolic function. And so very similar to an exponential function. The only difference is here we have two asymptotes. The x-axis and the y-axis. So the y-axis is one of my asymptotes, and the x-axis is my other one. Then we have a look at what does k tell us. So k is this value at the top, my numerator, and it says that the bigger k, so if k is a positive, so let's make it, if k is bigger than 0, then it's going to be in quadrants 1 and 3, and if k is a negative, then it will be in quadrants 2 and 4. All right. That, we don't need to know much else than that. So if we have a look, we need some points. So let us, how do we find points? Well, we make a table. We pick one or two points. So let's got minus 1 and 0 and 1. So when x is minus 1, y is 6. When it's 0, it's undefined. Y, that is my asymptote. And when it's 1, it's going to be negative 6. So, if we have to sketch our function, we know that this is an asymptote, so it never touches. The x-axis is also an asymptote. K is negative, which means it needs to lie in this quadrant. And it needs to lie in that quadrant. Right, it's not too important of how you draw it. What's more important is that you label your points. So if this is minus 1, this is going to be 6. And if this is positive 1, this here is negative 6. And those are your four main functions that we deal with. Fantastic. So just to recap, if we want to sketch a function, what are the things we need? We need some points, right? The main points are obviously going to be an x-intercept and a y-intercept. We may also need to find a turning point. All we do then is we plot the points. And once we've plotted the points, we connect the dots. And that is basically how we construct functions or how we sketch our functions. Thank you for listening. I hope this helps you
in terms of your studies.